Hi, this is Katie. It is vlog week seven. Um, and I just wanted to start it off now to give you a little update on my new diet. If you watched my last couple vlogs, I talked about how I'm changing my diet for my esophagus disorder, my digestion, my inflammation, all that kind of stuff. And um, that I'm going to be doing a strict diet of just meat, fruit, salt, honey, and the protein shakes that I have and one bag of chocolate. And that's like all I'm gonna have for a few weeks. And then I'm gonna cut out a couple things in the protein shakes and the chocolate and then just do that for another few weeks. But I have been on that diet so far for a few days and I feel awful. So basically I kind of knew that there was, this is Bubba by the way. Um, I kind of knew that there was a decent chance that I was going to feel sick from kind of like detoxing grains and um, that's actually not why I feel sick which is interesting. I think that the diet has been fine. I have not been really craving anything. I've been doing just okay with the meat and the fruit and then again my protein shakes that have my protein powder in them that has a little bit of sugar and I've had a little bit of chocolate and I've been doing okay. Um, but the reason that I feel so sick is because even though my diet is so restricted um, apparently I still ate something that my body does not agree with and that's kind of the whole point of this um, This diet, right? I don't know if you can tell I'm like I'm very out of it right now um, So basically I can tell since I've had digestive issues for as long as I can remember like since I was a kid I can tell when I feel sick because of food like it's generally right after I eat and I can just kind of tell with the symptoms that I have so sometimes after I eat my stomach hurts and I get sick. Sometimes after I eat, my esophagus hurts and I can tell when it's something to do with my esophagus and or even the acid reflux, but generally with my esophagus disorder. But also I can tell what I'm going through right now. So I do have some esophagus symptoms from my esophagus disorder where it feels like really tight in my esophagus, but sadly enough, that's not the most serious symptom that I feel right now. The only way I can even kind of describe how I feel sometimes after I eat a food that apparently I'm not supposed to, but whether I just don't know or whatever, the only comparison I can really kind of make is feeling motion sick. So sometimes after I eat, and if obviously I end up eating something that I'm really not supposed to, but I just don't know or whatever, I get nauseated, I get like a mild headache, like mild nausea, mild headache. I get really exhausted and I get really intense brain fog. And that is also, again, on top of kind of the esophagus issues that I feel where it's like really tight and stuff. So that's how I feel right now. I just ate lunch. I had ground beef, um, sweet potatoes, which I know are not technically a fruit or anything, but I also decided to leave those in my diet for right now to see. So I had ground beef, sweet potatoes, an avocado, or like half an avocado, and um, some cantaloupe and some honeydew. And so far, I mean, it's brand new into my diet. And again, I still need to do so much like experimenting and trial and error because there are some people who have similar digestive issues or who have even the same esophagus disorder and they can figure out the diet pretty quickly. With mine, it's just been a real struggle to figure out my diet and to figure out what I'm allergic to and, and what I, I can't eat and what affects me. It's just been hard. It's taken me a long time. I've been changing my diet around for years and it's just taking me a really long time to figure out what's going on. But I'm determined, you know, and um, I'm not gonna let days like today like completely let me fail at this, but a day like today really does kind of push me down a little bit, like, cause I just feel so sick. And sometimes when I feel so sick like this, I get frustrated or I get upset about it sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, I'm sick, gotta push through, whatever, or oh, I'm sick, gotta rest, whatever. There are some days like today where I just get like frustrated and overwhelmed because I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm doing everything right and it keeps messing up and just so sometimes it gets to me. But I think that the ground beef, which I did get low fat ground beef, but I do think that might be one of my esophagus triggers. And again, I know some people with acid reflux are like, oh my gosh, you should never eat fatty food. You should never eat spicy food. But I just want to remind you that everyone's acid reflux triggers are different. Like some people with acid reflux can eat some spicy food sometimes or whatever. Um, like everyone is super different. And so I'm just trying to figure out my triggers with my acid reflux. I'm trying to figure out my triggers with my esophagus disorder. And I'm trying to figure out my triggers with inflammation in my body. And I'm trying to figure out the triggers for my digestion 
issues and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of stuff combined. And so what I think it is, I, I'm a little nervous, but I've noticed since I started this diet, I've only had beef since I started this diet. I haven't had any other meat so far. And basically after I eat, I do feel that kind of uh, like esophagus issue where like it does feel a little inflamed or like food kind of is stuck for a few seconds or it's just really uncomfortable. What I'm feeling right now with my esophagus, luckily it's not like last year when I was in severe pain, it's more like discomfort, but that was the last few days I had that, you know, after I ate for a little while. Anyway, I'm so out of it right now, but I'm trying to, to explain what's going on. I'm gonna have chicken probably tomorrow, so I'm gonna see that. Then I also think it might be the sweet potatoes because the last few days that I've been on this diet, I've had the beef, I've had the fruit, I've had the avocado, and I haven't felt this wave of exhaustion, like headachey, like brain foggy. I've felt the esophagus things, which is why I think it might be the beef, but I haven't, or I mean, it could be something else, right? It could be some of the fruit, it could be the pineapple, but I didn't have pineapple today. But I'm gonna try to do like, semi different meals like every day to be like all right i had beef and pineapple i got sick the next thing i'm gonna do beef by itself and see you know stuff like that it's so much trial and error which and again i know for some people it's easier or quicker for me this is it's just been a long a long journey for me but anyway um the only new thing that i added today since i started my diet was the sweet potatoes and oh and honey i haven't had honey since i started the diet either and i did have some honey so basically either I'm gonna try sweet potatoes by themselves one of these days and see if I feel this sick because then it'll be really obvious or I'll do the opposite where it's like just the beef and the melon and see or just the honey and see. But yeah, so I, I don't feel good. I don't feel good at all and um, it's fine. I can handle it. It's not severe pain, but I do have, it's hard to explain because Sometimes I, I notice, especially when I talk about it like on camera, but even when I talk about it sometimes with my friends, sometimes I downplay how much pain I'm in because I don't want to seem like I'm complaining. But then I think that when I downplay it, it almost makes it seem like I'm talking about it for no reason because like, oh, why would you talk about it if it's not that big of a deal? I don't know. But I am just going to tell you now in this vlog, I'm sorry, it's kind of like a Debbie Downer vlog so far, but I am just gonna tell you my esophagus does either hurt or has discomfort every single day, basically. And I just don't talk about it because I, you know, honestly, I kind of got used to it because I realized last year that I have something called eosinophilic esophagitis, but even for probably at least a year, but potentially longer before that, I kind of felt like nauseated after I ate. And so I've dealt with with these symptoms for a while. And so honestly, it's a sad thing to say and other people who have chronic illness and stuff might understand, but some of the pains or discomfort, like I just kind of got used to it. And also I just don't want to talk about it all the time to complain. Cause if I told you every single time I was in some sort of pain or something was really uncomfortable in my body, that's all I would be talking about in all honesty, you know? And I, I don't want to do that. So I also don't want it to be like, oh, if Katie's not talking about it, that means that she feels fine. Because there are some times that I do feel fine, but generally it's when I haven't eaten. And so it's just kind of frustrating when like eating is, sorry, I'm getting sad. Eating is supposed to be one of the things that we're supposed to do. Like that most people, that's like how we get our fuel, you know, it's how we get our energy. And it's just, it's just rough sometimes. Again, most days, like I just push through, but there are just some days where I just like get down about it. And it's like, I've had struggles like this since I was a kid. It's just frustrating and I'm, I'm so glad and I'm so grateful that the pain is not as bad as last year when like I couldn't even drink water I'm so grateful that it's better from that I really am but it's just still frustrating sometimes to just still feel like sick or really uncomfortable or in pain every single day it's just like rough and again I don't want to complain about it which is why I don't really want to talk about it because sometimes it's hard for me to share information without seeming like I'm complaining so I just like I've talked about it sometimes when I had news but me feeling uncomfortable or sick every day is not news. It's what I've been dealing with for years and I just kind of don't really share it all the time because I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. I am just doing what I can to push through. You know, that's why I'm, I'm so okay drastically changing my diet because if it helps, I'll be so grateful. And it's just frustrating and hard. And so, yeah, so basically it's three o'clock. I still have at least an hour of work to do or so, but I'm going to do it from bed. I was doing it from my desk, but I'm like, I'm just going to lie down. I just have to finish editing a video. Um, and then any other work today that I was going to do, I'm, I'm not going to do like, I'm just going to rest because I feel so out of it. And that's just the choice I'm going to make. I'm just making the choice to rest. And then 
you know, I'll eat later. I won't eat sweet potatoes um, and I'll just see just the beef. But um, anyway, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's interesting because as much as I thought I was going to feel sick from like not eating grains, I thought that I was going to like feel different. I don't, which is cool. But again, I am still keeping a little bit of sugar in. So that might be why like I'm easing into it a little bit. But, um, but yeah, if I notice that like I still feel this sick every day on this diet over the next few days, then I'm going to alter it quicker. I know I initially said I'm going to do this diet for a few weeks and then after a few weeks, I'm going to cut out, my protein and the chocolate and then I'll do just meat and fruit for a few weeks but if I notice that I get this sick every day and my esophagus still hurts every day then there's no point of continuing it for that long of a period of time so I'll kind of let you guys know but I don't know it's just like upsetting and frustrating but I'm I'm still gonna do what I can to figure it out it's just taking a long time and it sucks because when I do something wrong obviously it's like i'm not doing it on purpose i didn't know that my lunch was gonna make me sick i didn't think it would i didn't think it would at all i wasn't even i wasn't worried about it at all that it was gonna make me sick and i ate it and then i just immediately like and again i felt this kind of like car sick it's the only thing i can kind of compare it to it's not the same but it's similar ish but i feel like this semi often after i eat so like i can tell that it's because of some sort of food but I'm going to go back to work, lie down, and then I'll talk to you guys at some other point this week, talk a little bit about my diet. So this vlog will probably be one more like just diet and food and how I'm feeling vlog. And then as of like next week, they'll get back to more like day to day kind of stuff that's not just surrounded by food. Like I'll probably still talk about food or still talk about how I'm feeling, but they won't only be about food. So anyway, all right, I'm going to go. I'll talk to you guys later. Hey guys, it's a little while later. This is Biscuit. Um, yeah, dinner did not make me feel great either. I had beef and avocado and some plantain chips that were in coconut oil and I just still feel really sick and I just like was crying because I'm just so frustrated and upset and I know that some people watching this, I'm sure if you've never dealt with food allergies or esophagus disorders or stomach disorders, it might be hard to, to really understand why this can become emotional or how much pain I can actually be in, or how much discomfort I can actually be in. Um, but it's just, it's a lot, it's a lot for me. And some days I can handle it, and some days either I'm just more sick than other days, and or just emotionally I can't handle it. And today it's both. Today, like, I feel really sick from the food I ate, and emotionally I'm, I'm not handling it well. Um, so I just kind of wanted to share that with you a little bit. Um, and I know that some of you might uh, have the urge to tell me, oh, go vegan or, oh, do this, do this. And it's like, I've tried so many things, guys, and I just have to keep trying to find what's right for me because my body is so just different than a typical body. And this esophagus disorder is really difficult to navigate. And my other stomach disorders that I have and, and my digestive issues and stuff like it's just a lot to navigate and so I'm not gonna have beef again for at least a few days like tomorrow and the next day I'm gonna have chicken and see how I feel with that. I remember growing up like at least like in my teens and stuff I don't remember much younger than that in terms of food but like I remember in my teens and in my 20s like any time that I ate fast food or anything processed I felt totally fine. I felt totally fine. But anytime I ate like a salad or something, I felt horrifically sick. And again, I know that's backwards than not only what the American diet says or even what actual nutritionists would say, but it's also just kind of against what we consider to be common sense. It's like, why would real foods hurt you, but fake foods not? And it's just, oh, sorry, I have you kind of like balanced. And it's just, again, because like, there are just really specific things wrong with my body that kind of make food just really difficult and kind of backwards for me. And so I know part of it has to do with healing my body. So once I start to heal it more, I might be able to eat different foods or it really might just be that I can't eat a ton of whole foods. And so then I just have to keep figuring it out. And again, I hope I just please like 
don't leave mean comments or try to tell me what to do. This is such a hard struggle and I have been doing so many different things over the past 10, 15 years of dealing with this. Um, not my esophagus disorder because that's newer, but all my other digestive issues. But this is just me seeing what I can do and being vulnerable with you guys about how difficult it can be for me. So um, it's like, I don't know, 9, 9.30 or something. I don't know. But um, I'm going to shut the light off and watch TV and go to sleep. Um, hopefully I'll feel better in the morning. But um, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to do like chicken and fruit and see how that goes. And I'll let you guys know. So, all right, good night. Hey guys, it's the next day. I have two minutes left on my camera. Um, so I'll make this short and then delete stuff. But I'm gonna be really honest. I'm gonna be really, really honest. I'm nervous about what I share nowadays. And I think I've mentioned this kind of briefly in a couple videos here and there, but like, I know the last couple years, I've been more nervous about what I say online that people are gonna twist my words or think that I'm saying something horrible or just not even hear me when I talk about my own health, like that they'll give me advice that I already said I didn't want or anything like that. And so sometimes I get nervous, like sharing things. I don't know, it's something that I need to figure out. But anyway, what I wanted to share, because I do wanna share with you guys, like I, I love being honest and I love being vulnerable, but there have just been a couple things that I've been nervous to share, but I kinda of wanna work on that and figure out like the best happy medium for me like of finding the things that I really do feel comfortable sharing and not necessarily always just worrying that people are gonna judge me or people are gonna twist my words. But anyway, it's the next day. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. All I've had today is my smoothie because I'm nervous to eat. So that's my little vulnerable moment. Um, I feel like I had, oh, I had a couple bites of um, like dried fruit or baked fruit or whatever it was. But besides that, I just had my smoothie and it's three o'clock and I'm hungry. But I'm just nervous to eat after the last day or two of feeling sick. Again, I know that this diet is going to take me a while to, to figure out. And I know some people figure it out so much quicker. Mine's just taking me a while. But I am going to go make some chicken and see how that goes. Hey guys, it is way later. It is like 9.30 and I'm about to like put pajamas on, lie down, uh, watch some TV. But today, health-wise, was a little bit better. Is it still like a little uncomfortable in my esophagus? Yeah, but it's definitely not as bad as it was yesterday. So I would call that a win. The only other things I really ate today were a couple of those um, like packaged baked fruit. So I had a couple of those as well. Um, but yeah, that's really all I have today. So I didn't eat a ton, but I ate enough, I guess. And I had my smoothie, of course. Um, but so in all honesty, I know I said that this diet is going to last about three weeks with my smoothies and then I'm going to cut those out. And then another three weeks with still making smoothies, but not with the protein powder and stuff like that and just be more strict meat and fruit. Uh, I don't see this lasting that long. I think that I wanted to do it that long to make sure that I was giving myself time to see results. However, I was already so sick yesterday and there are certain things with changing my diet that are going to take time to see because I need to get certain things out of my body and change certain things and stuff like that. But there are also some things that are more immediate, you know, and like when you have a food allergy, it's a more immediate thing that you can tell what's going on. And especially with my esophagus, it's more of something that I can tell immediately. The inflammation is something that might take like of several weeks to figure out. So it is kind of like several things combined. However, I doubt that I'm going to be keeping this diet for six weeks like I planned. I think that I am gonna be changing this goal a little bit, which I'm okay with. Like if I have a goal, especially if it's like a personal goal like this, and you know, a few days in or halfway through, I realize, hey, actually this is not good for me, and I'm totally okay changing it. And so what I'm gonna end up doing, I think at least, who knows, um, but what I'm thinking at least now is add some foods back that I know that I've eaten before that do not hurt me. Um, and so that's why it kind of gets complicated with the esophagus disorder, plus my digestive issues, plus trying to fix inflammation because it's a lot of different things. Like there are a couple things that I know I can eat that don't hurt my stomach, but are they things that might actually be adding inflammation? I'm not really sure. So there's kind of like a couple, uh, confusing aspects to it, but that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. I doubt this is going to be six weeks. It might, I might do this for another few days and be like, you know what? I will kind of stick with it, but it seems doubtful at this point because of how I've been feeling. Even right now with just the chicken and avocado, like my esophagus does not feel good, which might mean maybe I can't have avocado. 
you know? Um, and again, I know that for some people it's, it's a lot easier or quicker than this, but for me, it is just something that I've been struggling with this for a long time in my life with my digestion and stuff. The esophagus obviously is a little newer, but just for me, it is taking a while because it's very obvious that it's not just some mainstream allergies in terms of like the top eight like it's not just the popular ones clearly there's something else going on with like a random food or multiple random foods so i just wanted to tell you that give you a little bit of an update but also i wanted to backtrack a little bit to like one of the last segments that i showed basically i understand the idea that not everyone is going to hear me, that not everyone's gonna agree with me, not everyone's gonna listen to me, not everyone is going to be nice to me or like me or care about what I'm saying. Like I know all those things. And it is such a common thing online for people to negatively talk about someone else. It's a common thing. I don't think that common means good or that we should accept it, but it is common. And so if I ever talk about how we should speak nicer to each other or like earlier if I talk about how sometimes I get nervous about what I'm going to share because sometimes people do twist my words or get mad at me for something that I never even said or try to tell me to do something even though I already said no or whatever you know I know that that happens a decent amount but I also know that a lot of people's response would be don't worry about them don't worry about those people and 100% in terms of those kinds of people who are kind of like either out to get you or purposefully not hearing you or even accidentally not understanding you, but they are rude about it, whatever. Obviously, it's not good to let those people like make me upset or make me angry. I get that logically, right? And I understand when a lot of you guys might even say that to me or you might say that to other people. Hey, don't let the, the haters get you. Don't let the trolls get you. My camera just stopped recording because I ran out of space and I don't know when it stopped recording. But basically, all I was saying is that everyone gets negative Negative comments online right it's a super common thing I don't think it means it's good but I understand that it's common and a lot of people respond with hey don't let the haters get to you those things shouldn't bother you stuff like that and while of course it's not good to let other people's reactions or other people's opinions dictate how we feel about ourselves and how we act however all I want to say is like a lot of that's easier said than done I want to just minimize any hate or any confusion as much as I can uh, when I talk about things in my personal life, when I talk about things online. And so that's sometimes why I repeat myself a lot. That's why I sometimes kind of like try to keep the peace about certain things. I just want to minimize any negative issues. But I also have realized that that has made me like nervous to share things. And again, like I know that it's not healthy or the best idea to let other people who potentially misunderstand me or other people who potentially hate me or have negative thoughts or even incorrect thoughts. I know that it's not good to let those things get to me or to make me act a certain way. But again, it's just easier said than done. It just really is, especially like being on this side of it. It is just something like I read the comments. I read all the comments and I don't respond to all of them, but I've been responding to a lot more lately, but like I read them and I like the idea of a world where we are all nice and respectful. And that's the type of world that I want to spread and that I want to be a part of. But I just have noticed that that has made me like afraid to share things sometimes. I'm just being honest. So as much as anyone could tell me like, hey, don't let those things get to you. I would say the same thing. Don't let the haters get you. I would say the same thing. I'm just, I'm just saying it's it's a little bit easier said than done and uh, difficulty does not mean not to do it right I totally get that but I'm just saying like it is something that sometimes kind of seeps in even if you don't really notice like a couple of years ago when I started to like kind of not share as much or be nervous about what joke I was gonna say or anything like that that was not really a conscious decision I don't think, I don't think at least. It was more just like, oh, what am I saying? What am I saying? What am I saying? And I started to edit myself more. And so now this is like edited Katie. I'm still always honest and stuff, but it doesn't mean that I tell you everything that's happening. And so I also understand that it's like, if I only share a certain part with you, then it doesn't make sense if I would expect you to understand the whole story because I'm only sharing a little bit of it. And so it is just like a confusing thing of where I'm still trying to figure out what I'm comfortable sharing and what I want to keep private. But even if I keep something private, like sometimes you guys might see that I'm in a bad mood or you might see that 
I'm having a hard time or whatever. Or if I'm struggling really badly, sometimes it's like, well, I don't want to have to put on like a brave face right now or you know what I mean? So sometimes it's just, just literally just something that comes with this job. And I love this job. I love sharing with you, but just part of it has been trying to figure out what I'm comfortable sharing and what I'm not. And I used to be comfortable sharing a lot more and my channel grew. And then, uh, you know, there were a, a whole array of horrible comments and really just mean people attacking me and trying to spread rumors and just like horrible things. And it did make me like nervous of what to share. And so even this past year that I've been so sick, it's like, I've been struggling with it every single day. And when was the last time I even talked about it with you? It's been months. It's been months since, uh, not since I talked about my diet, but I mean, it's been months since I told you guys like my esophagus hurts or I don't feel well or I'm scared because it's also like, I don't always want my channel to just be negative, but I want it to be real. But how real can it be when I'm editing myself about what to say? It's just kind of like a confusing space. And so I understand why we do end up assuming certain things because we only get limited information. I do get that. One thing that I just hope that we try to minimize is assuming that everyone's okay just because they don't tell you that they're not. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Like, I think it's great to hope that people are having a good life and hope that people are feeling okay. But I mean more in the way of like, if I never tell you that I don't feel well, and then three months later, I say, I've been sick every day the last three months. I just kept it to myself. I mean more like, like I hope that you would believe me even though I didn't share the whole time. So yeah, it's a little confusing for me to try to figure out, but basically I have been sick most days and there have been some days that really scare me. And like yesterday was hard. Today has also still been kind of hard with just some certain things in my personal life, but especially with my diet and trying to figure out like, I might have this discomfort slash pain the rest of my life. I was on medication, I was on it for a while. It didn't, like it helped in the beginning, but then after a while it didn't help anymore. And then I stopped it and I did not feel any difference. And for me personally, I don't wanna be on meds unless like I absolutely need to. And so I stopped taking them, felt no difference. And so I'm like, well, I'm not gonna take them if they don't really do anything. And so I know it's all diet changes and it is just something that is a struggle. And again, there are some days where I need chapstick, like so bad. There are some days that I handle it better than others. Um, there are some days that I physically feel okay versus other days. Like yesterday was really bad. Today, again, I don't feel great, but I feel way better than yesterday. Like I can like function a lot better today, but there are also just some days, I don't even know if handling it's the right word because there are just some days that it just does get to me where like my brain is just like, no. And yeah, I just do feel like really overwhelmed by it lately. And so it's just something I'm figuring out. But again, it's just it's such a weird mix of what I'm trying to figure out because I don't want to seem like I'm complaining, but I also don't want to like just act like everything's fine when it's not, you know? And so it's like a weird balance of what I'm trying to figure out where it's like, I guess I'm just gonna tell you guys, I don't feel well almost every single day. Something is bothering me, but I'm used to it. And I'm sure a lot of people with chronic illnesses understand that. And it's a sad reality when we get used to pain like that. But a lot of people do. Even if you don't have chronic illness, you might have chronic back pain. Like even right now, I just thought of that because my shoulder hurts, you know? And it's like, there are a lot of people who have chronic pain. So I'm sure a lot of you guys un might understand that like some days it just gets to you. Some days you're totally fine. You barely even notice it because you're so used to it. And there are just other days where it just gets to you mentally and it's like draining and it's like, oh my gosh, like will this ever stop? And you know what, it might not. And I'm one of those people who this could go away and I am going to treat it the best I possibly can. That's why I'm changing my diet so drastically and I'm doing all these changes and I've seen so many doctors, I've gotten so many tests, like I will put action into making it better. However, there's also just the chance that it won't ever truly get better. And so I'm one of those people like while I'm working on something getting better, whether it's my physical health or my mental health or a goal or anything like that, while I'm working on reaching that goal, while I'm working on getting better or, or helping myself, I also want to still do what I can to like thrive in whatever way I can and be okay in whatever way I can, even while I'm dealing with the symptoms of whatever's wrong. Yeah, so without complaining, I just do want to explain to you that I just am still dealing with this. Um, but again, a lot of the days, even when I feel this discomfort, uh, cause I feel this discomfort basically every day, honestly, honestly, usually when I feel this, I barely notice. 
I only really notice it right now because I'm talking about it. I've gotten so used to it. So it's uncomfortable right now. Um, it also kind of feels like another way that I've explained it. And I've explained it like this for a while, even before I realized I had my esophagus disorder. It kind of feels like, you know, when like you're full in your stomach and you're like, oh, I feel full. That's kind of how it feels like all the way up to like the back of my throat or like the back of my mouth or whatever. Um, so it kind of feels like full, you know, like, like tight or like swollen, those kind of feelings. And personally, I've only been on this meat and fruit and my smoothies just for a few days. But again, since I pay so close attention to my body with certain things, sometimes I'm like, wait, I can't tell. I don't know if that hurt me or not, but there are certain times that I'm like, oh, I can totally tell. And I don't think that this diet is going to be long-term. I don't, but again, it's only been a few days. I might change my mind. I don't know. I'm just kind of taking you guys along for the ride. So literally by the time I post this video, I may have changed my mind. I will keep you guys updated. I'm going to go. Um, it is 10 o'clock and uh, I just want to lie down. I just want to lie down um, and watch some TV and I, I do have discomfort, but God is with me this whole time. And I, sometimes I forget that. And so I need to remind myself and I'm going to remind you guys as well. God is with you all the time, all the time. And I remember reading something once that was like, maybe instead of praying, God, take this pain away from me, maybe a prayer that we can add to our lives is God be with me through this pain. Because pain is inevitable in life. Some people might go through more pain than other people or whatever, but pain is inevitable. So I just thought that that idea was, was interesting that maybe instead of saying, God, just take this pain, take this pain. Instead, it's like, God, be with me through this pain. Be with me because he wants to be, he wants to be with us. And while I'm saying this, I'm reminding myself too, because again, sometimes when I'm in pain, I, I don't want to ask God for anything because I'm like, Oh, I don't want to bother him. There's other people who have it worse or other things going on, or he's busy, which is so silly. Cause it's not true. He's never too busy for me, but sometimes I'm like, Oh, I'll just handle it myself. I'll deal with it myself. Little control freak kind of thing, but that's not how he wants us to be, you know? And so I'm going to go talk to God and I'm going to watch TV. All right, I love you guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow or in a few days. Hey guys, I'm sure I look a little rough today. I feel a little rough. I did not sleep enough last night at all. <laughs> and so I'm just very tired today. But anyway, um, so I have been on this new diet for not even a week, I don't think. Um, and I decided, I was kind of thinking about it yesterday and then I made the final decision today to cut it short. This is one of the risks that I take with sharing my life with you and sharing my goals with you because it means that I'm publicly being held accountable for my goals, which I do think is a good thing. However, sometimes that makes it hard when I decide for myself, you know what, this goal that I made actually is not what's best for me. You know what, I tried this goal and it ended up actually making things worse or something like that, you know, because then I feel like I have to explain it more. And so basically, um, you know, I was doing this diet to see if I could help with my esophagus and my inflammation. And I know that certain things with my esophagus, when I eat a food, I can tell basically within, you know, 15 minutes if it hurts my esophagus, but the inflammation and all the other things could take a few weeks to see if there's changes when I change my diet. But I just have noticed that not only have I still had my esophagus symptoms even since I've been on the strict diet, but also I haven't been eating very much. I've been like nervous to eat. And since my diet is so limited and even the very few foods that I was allowing myself to eat were still not making me feel well, it just was kind of starting an issue with me where I was like, I don't even want to eat. Like I'm nervous to eat. Like I'm hungry, but I don't know what to eat and I'm nervous to eat. And so I just realized for me that the goal that I had to do this for six weeks after starting it and doing it for a few days, I just realized that was just not the best idea for me. And I'm such a big believer in goals. You guys know I have a second channel all about mindset and I'm going to talk about goals a lot on there. And one of the things that I always want to make clear is if someone starts a goal and if it's, especially if it's something personal that kind of only pertains to you. So if it's like a hobby or lifestyle change or whatever, and it mostly just really pertains to you. And I'm just a believer, and this is just my opinion, but I'm a believer in that if you start that goal and you realize after doing it for a little while, you realize that it's actually not right for you, that it actually does not fit in with your morals or values or the rest of your goals or your priorities, 
then I personally think that, you know, with a lot of evaluation and stuff, that it is okay to actually end that goal or to quit that goal or to alter that goal. And so for me, I'm still going to still be strict on my diet. So I'm not just totally like giving this up and like eating cupcakes every day. That's not what I'm doing. But I just am going to alter it a little bit, basically, because I realize that just the meat and fruit is not going to work for me. And it could work for some people. And I'm sure it does work for some people. Like there's some girl that I follow on Instagram who only eats meat because she had so many autoimmune disorders and had so many inflammation issues and stuff that she found out that eating only meat was the only thing that helped her. And I am such a believer in doing strict things for your life if you know it's what's best for you and you know that it's like actually what is right to do. Not just if you want to, but if you actually know that it's right. And so I thought that trying this diet was the right thing to do. And then after being on it, you know, I just realized, and I know some people might be like, oh, you were only on it for a few days. It wasn't even a week. How do you even know? With my esophagus, I can know immediately. The other things might take longer, like the inflammation and stuff would take several weeks to notice, but my esophagus, I can tell pretty immediately. And I have just not felt well basically all week. And it's not a detox thing. It's none of that. Cause I can tell it's not detoxing carbs or anything like that. I would be able to tell if that's what it was. This is strictly, I can tell after I eat my esophagus hurts. So I know exactly what it is. You know, it's, it's hard to explain, especially if you don't have something similar, but I can just tell like, Oh, this is from this. This is from this. This is from this. And so anyway, I think I'm going to allow myself at least right now, Again, I'm gonna be continuously changing this. And so I hope that you guys can just kind of understand that this is a hard thing for me and it's gonna be continuously changing until I can figure out what's right. And what's right for me might not look, you know, typical for other people, but. So what I'm gonna do is I was thinking last night, what are some foods that I generally have felt safe eating over the last year that I don't notice any immediate like moderate to severe reaction, right? Because most things that I eat or drink, I have a mild reaction of like discomfort, but I was trying to think what foods over the last year did I eat that just maybe a little mild discomfort, but did not give me moderate or severe discomfort. And I came up with like three things that I'm gonna allow myself to add back. And again, still be really restricted, but just have a couple more options. One is gluten-free chicken nuggets. I have found out that I can eat those and I generally feel okay after I eat them. There's two different brands, the Applegate ones and one that I got at Whole Foods that are dinosaurs. I don't remember the brand. But if I don't dip them in mustard or anything, just have them plain, I think that I can handle that. So I'm gonna add those back. And yes, they do have rice flour. They do probably have canola oil, which I don't love adding seed oils back, but a lot of that stuff is like, I'm just gonna decrease my seed oils. I don't think I'm gonna completely cut them out right now. I think I'm gonna decrease them for now. So this is one of the only things that's gonna have the seed oils. And they do have some spices, but I just have noticed when I ate them, I did not feel like an intense reaction. The other thing that I'm gonna add back is my turkey sandwiches, but I'm just going to do like a gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, egg-free white bread with uh, boar's head turkey and potentially lettuce, but that's it, no mustard, no onions. I'm still not gonna do spicy food. You know, I still am gonna be really strict with this in certain ways, but just the turkey, lettuce, and bread I think I can handle, I think. And the last thing, which is gonna sound so random, is uh, some cereal. Cereal with my coconut milk, I have realized that I could eat that and not feel super sick afterwards. So besides that, I'm still gonna do the meat and fruit, but I'm just gonna add those few things back and just kind of alter it from there and just kind of check in with myself every day and figure out how I'm feeling every day and then potentially keep changing it. Yeah, so this is like me actively deciding that what I've been doing the last week, something is still drastically off and I'm gonna figure it out by having a couple more foods added in and then really like dissecting, like probably doing a lot of like just individual meals with just like one or two ingredients, you know? Because the other day when I got really sick, I had beef, avocado, sweet potatoes, fruit, like I had a bunch of things. And I'm like, I can't pinpoint which it is or which combination of foods it is. And again, if you don't have food allergies or difficulties with digestion or anything, this might be so weird for you to like understand, which I totally get. But like, there are some times where I can eat this food on a Tuesday and feel fine. I can eat the same food on a Wednesday and feel sick. Or I can eat this food on a Tuesday with this other food and feel fine, but I can eat this food on Wednesday with a different food and feel sick. There's just so many different aspects to it. And this is not even me making it over complicated. This is just how complicated it is for me and for my body. Like there's just a lot of things going on. And if for any reason it starts to get worse, I will go back to the doctor, but I am allowed to make these changes. Like the doctor told me I'm allowed to make these changes. So basically this is just me making the conscious decision of like, 
altering this diet again because I just realized once I started it that it was like nope for me it's just not working with my esophagus and stuff I was still getting sick so I'm just gonna change it again a little bit um and when I talk about these things like okay how do I explain this in one sentence because this what I'm about to say is way more of like an underthinking channel idea but basically I do not believe in giving up when something is hard or giving up when something is scary. I don't believe in that, especially when you're talking about like a real goal. I do not believe in giving up like, oh, well, I wanted to make a million dollars in three months and I didn't, so I'm just gonna give up. Like, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. But what I do believe in is if you have a goal, have an idea, again, especially if it just pertains to you and you start it and you're like, you know what, this is not working or this is not what I thought it was gonna be or this hurts more like with my diet, then I think it's okay to alter it and or to actively consciously quit. I think that's okay. Uh, but I don't want to talk about it in a way where it's just like, oh, Katie gave up because that's not what it is. Um, and I don't want to talk about it in a way where it's just like, oh, Katie's cheating or Katie's lying or Katie's always talking about goals, but then she herself always fails at her goals. And it's like, no, there are some goals that it's just once I start them, I realize that they're actually not right for me. And I personally think that that's an okay thing to notice. Again, especially if they only pertain to me, especially my health and stuff, you know. It's difficult and it's confusing, but um, I did wanna share with you a little bit about what's going on and what I'm thinking of doing. But I'm just gonna end this video because I know it's really, really long, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me and just kind of following along on this journey. Because again, I never really wanna sound like I'm complaining, but I do wanna share with you guys what's going on and some days it's just harder than others. And again, I know that especially if I if I just kind of seem okay and if I'm smiling, I understand that it's just gonna be easy to assume that I'm doing okay. And sometimes I am. Just because I might be doing okay or smiling in that moment or laughing or having fun or able to work or anything like that, it does not mean that I'm doing it because it's easy. It might mean that I'm doing it, but it's really, 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 really hard. But I'm just pushing through as much as I can to still live the life that I think God wants for me, even through all the difficulties that I have. So I don't wanna complain, but I also don't want to just act like everything's fine. I just wanna be, you know, honest in in certain ways. And, you know, obviously some things I'm still gonna keep private, but I do wanna be honest with you about certain things. And so this diet has been a struggle and I'm just still trying to figure it out. But um, thank you guys for listening and being here with me. So yeah, I guess it's going to be it. Thank you again for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I love you. Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you later. Bye.